Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back to CGT, or excuse me, to Theory Lecture, Theory Lecture 03 for the Engineering Graphics, Engineering and Technical Graphics course. Um, this time we're going to focus on projection theory, talk a little bit about projection theory. Um, we're going to do some sketching on different um, um, parts and pieces here. And we're going to get started now. Projection theory. I'm going to come over here to, the, to this side here and um, I want to write out some notes. Projection theory. So when we talk about projection theory, now let me make sure here as I zoom up a little bit here. Okay. And when we're talking about projection theory, what you're trying to do is take a three-dimensional object, such as this, and you try to represent it on a two-dimensional plane, such as a piece of paper, okay, or a computer screen for that matter. So in order to do that, you have to be able to, one, have an object, two, have a plane of projection. This is glass plane here, okay, and then three, have your eyeballs to be able to see this stuff, okay? So what are the three things of projection theory, okay? One is the object. Without the object, you have nothing to project. Two, the projection plane. That is what you project the object onto. And in three, you have then the eye of the viewer. Okay. So now, what you have here is I'm going to put an object out here. Let me zoom this out a little bit. Okay. As far as I can get it. So we have an object. Well, let's take something a little bit more simple, though it's bigger. Okay, we have an object here. You can see what this object looks like here. You're looking at it from the top. Okay, so you have an object, okay? And what you're going to do is, is you're going to place this object in some kind of location. And in this case, I'm going to put a projection plane looking so, so now if I look, my eyeball is where this pin is up here and I'm looking down, okay, this is what I see. So you're taking the object and you're projecting it up to the projection plane, okay? And the, what's the orientation of this projection plane? This projection plane is in a horizontal orientation. Now let's take the object again, okay, and let's look at it again from looking down on top of it. I also have another projection plane. In this case, it is a vertical projection plane. Now, if I stand here, my line of sight, let me move this over a little bit further. So if I have my, my eyeball looking at this thing here, notice I'm looking perpendicular, 90 degrees or normal, this projection plane at the object, okay? So if I look through this, again, if this plane here was a horizontal orientation of a plane, this one here is a vertical orientation of the plane, and specifically, this is called a frontal plane. Again, a frontal plane gives you the most descriptive view of the objects. So if we look through this frontal plane, okay, and so turn this thing a little bit here, look through the frontal plane. Now this is what you show here. And what's the relationship between this plane here and the frontal plane? They are parallel with each other. And again, as evidenced by, if you're looking at the edge view of this plane, if I can get this thing per and you can see that the edge view of this plane on the object and the edge view of this projection plane, if I get it situated right, are parallel with each other. So again, that's a frontal plane. You can likewise then take and put a plane of projection on the right side, okay? So moving this away here a little bit, turning this up. Now my my viewer is over here, as shown by the pin, the line of sight. Get this thing tilted right. Again, notice it's 90 degrees of the projection plane, and you project this object up onto that plane. And again, notice that 
this, this are parallel, that and that are parallel, these are parallel here. So again, that view then, looking through the projection plane, would be like this. And again, this is not the best object to show because it's all one color, but we'll sketch it out here in a minute as an isometric and we'll show you what it looks like, okay? So projection plane. Now, with that said, if you have a, if you have a projection plane that is a frontal plane, you have a plane on the very front of the object, you got a plane on the back of the object, you get these planes in here. Any plane that would run parallel or is parallel to that projection plane will be shown true size and sight, true size and shape through that projection plane. And it'll be called whatever that projection plane is. This is a frontal projection plane. Any plane running parallel with it will be a frontal plane. Frontal plane here, frontal plane here, frontal plane here, here, there, and on the back. Same thing here. So again, a front view and also a view from the back will be on a frontal plane. And any plane parallel to that will be, again, shown. This profile plane over here, okay, you look at the object from the right end of the object, standing here, looking at it from the right, or put the projection plane over here, standing at it here. Let me get this a little bit more straightened out here. Looking at it then from the left. Your line of sight is perpendicular. Thus, any plane here will be running parallel, be called a profile plane. So your profile plane will control, you'll be viewing from the left side of the object or the right side of the object. Again, the frontal plane viewing from the front of the object or viewing from the back of the object. Okay? The horizontal plane being above the object or the object here and the the actual, basically, the viewer would be on the other side of the projection plane. You would see a bottom, bottom view. So if I would turn this thing upside down, and I would take this over here, I'd lay it out in this situation, okay? Then I would have then a view projecting from the bottom. So again, you have three principal planes of projection, okay? So again, let's make, a, let's make a, a view of this. Let's do some graphics here and actually then give a little bit of, of, of vantage point. I'm going to flip over to the isometric side here, okay? And I'm going to put an object out here. And this object is just going to be an L-shaped object you've seen me use before. Make sure I'm on here. I'm going to zoom up a little bit, okay? So I got the object on, so I'm putting this object here. Prismatic object. And I'm going to make this all even. I should practice what I preach. So I'm going to cool over app, ah, leave it alone. Make it two here, and then three here, and down here. So that's the very front of the object. Let's say it goes back then four here. And again, you should be well versed in sketching this feature, this actual object out here, because we've done it on more than one occasion in this class. So now, here's the object, okay? Remember a spherical conical person? Well, a spherical conical person is out here again, looking at this thing through this imaginary plane of projection, as kind of just shown in front of the object. So all these points then project up to this plane. Okay, all the points project up to the plane. That plane is vertical orientation. It would be a frontal plane. Okay, any plane parallel with this would be also called frontal. This front L shape would be a frontal plane because it's running parallel to the frontal plane of projection. The back one that's hidden here will also be a frontal plane. So again, you're looking for at the frontal plane. Okay, over here the same thing would happen. Okay, we would then, I'm just going to put this projection plane out in front of the object a little bit further here. Oops, I am not doing a very good job. Let's erase that and do this again. So I'm just going to erase this frontal plane off a bit here to make it less confusing for you. Okay, and let's put my frontal plane, let's say right up in here. Again, right there. Here's a spherical person over here looking at this thing. Their eyes are looking right at this, and what they see is going to be either, in this case, a right side view. So you're showing this right side in, 
this end it is two over from the left and the black or the left end it's actually blocked from your sight by the other planes so again that would be then profile and it would be then containing either the right side view or the left side view and then finally then we would have then the horizontal one above the object again I'm going to erase this off here a minute clean up my object a little bit and put a planar projection up above the object here, put a spherical conic person here looking down, okay, a line of sight's perpendicular to this plane, you would show then this planar plane here, this one here and the one on the bottom, unless you're showing a view from the top and a view from the bottom from the horizontal plane. Okay, now I'm going to flip back over here again, okay? So now we have then the object, the projection plane, the eye of the viewer, and you have three principal planes. One, horizontal. What views? Top and bottom. Two, frontal. Views, front and back. Three, Profile, views, right, and left. So there are a total of six principal views. Notice these are planes here. A top view and a bottom view are projected onto a plane. This is a frontal plane, okay? Top view. I'm going to put these on here. Bottom view. Front view. Back view. Right view. And left view. What is that telling you? Well, it's telling you where you're positioned yourself in space. Okay? And if you're looking through a horizontal plane, you're either above the object or below the object thus a top or bottom view. A frontal plane, you either got the plane and you in front of the object or the back of the object, giving you the front and back views. The profile plane of projection, you're either on the left hand of the object looking through the projection plane or the right hand end of the object looking at the projection plane. Okay? So know the difference between the principal planes, which is horizontal, profile, or frontal, excuse me, and profile, and the principal views, okay? top view, bottom view. The principal views are parallel to the principal plane of projection, okay, et cetera. Now let's look at this from, again, we've done this before from the orthogonal standpoint of over here saying, okay, then, you know, if I use that L shape again, I know you've seen this before, but looking at this front view here, it would be, you know, I am looking through that plane of projection, so here's the top view of the object. Again, making sure they're aligned. Okay, so this is, the front view is, if I stand here and I look in that direction through this plane of projection, that is what I'm going to see. That is what I'm going to see. The right side view. Let's see, I'm in it. One, two, three, four, let's see, five, okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. The right side view is if I'm standing here. 
looking in that direction through that plane, that is what I'm going to see. Looking through here, that's what I'm going to see. Same thing with the top. If I stand here, okay, if I'm standing here and I'm looking at this direction right here, that is what I'm going to see. Okay, simple projection theory. Okay. Now I'm going to switch pages here on you because I have run out of room. And if you have to do multiple pages, then please do so. But I'm going to take one of your, or a problem that's similar to the homework you have. Okay, similar to the homework that you have here. And first off, we're going to sketch this thing out as an isometric. And then we are going to do some things with it. Okay? So first off, I'm going to come over here and I'm starting at a random location. And make sure I'm on the screen. Okay. Let me zoom out a little bit. Make sure I know where I'm at here. Don't want to lose you guys here. I'm starting here. And I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 blocks. And I'm going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And again back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then finishing off the construction box. Always start with the complete construction box. So now what we have here now is just a solid or positive prism. It's just solid. It has mass on it. Okay? So let's do some things with this solid prism here. Okay? First off is I'm going to take a prism and I'm going to cut out part of this, this solid thing. I'm going to come over and say, okay, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to take and I'm going to build another prism in here. And I've made it four here by, let's see, one, two, three, four here. And I'm going to have this thing cut into there. Oh, let's see how many I got. One, two, three, that's eight. So I have this thing come in two, two here, and here. Again. So I've cut that prismatic feature out. And I'm going to replicate this right on the other side of the object, just the same way. I'm going to come over here, cutting it out over here, cutting it out over here. Okay, and then that would be the corner coming down right here. Okay, replicating that out. So I have now what? I have a horizontal plane that looks like an eye on the top, a horizontal plane that looks like an eye on the bottom. Okay, I have then this profile plane looking at it from the right, profile plane looking at it from the left. <clears throat> How many frontal planes I have? I have one, two, three, four on the back, five, and six. Okay. How do I break this thing down now as geometry? I would say that I have one solid or positive prism and two negative prisms. Okay. So we have that set up. Now let's do something else to this, this actual part. Let's come over here and let's define an inclined plane. The inclined plane starts here. So I'm going over from top to bottom. I'm on the front of the object. Two in from the left towards the right, one end of the plane. Then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to define the other end of this thing on the right hand side, going from top towards bottom. And it is in four back from the back towards the front. And now I'm going to define this plane. Again, bear with me here while I sketch this thing in. Because if I don't turn it, I'm not going to get a very good job at it. There. And then coming across then here. OK. So now what do we have here? OK. What do we have? What's our result in geometry? OK. You know what? I'm going to make a change on this thing here, OK? It's like, OK, now, why is he changing this here? Because I made a mistake. 
Now, the question is, did I make the mistake on purpose or not? Well, in order, since this thing is light, you know, I'm going to come in here and say, well, if I sketch this stuff out light here, I can always make corrections to it. And I don't like the orientation of these negative cylinders, so I'm going to switch them. Okay, negative prisms. So I'm saying instead of them being in a vertical orientation, I'm going to lay them in a horizontal orientation. I'm going to say I'm going to want to start here, going all the way through the back. Coming over then four, going back up to here, going all the way back. So now my orientation has been changed. Hence, if you've done that thing in pin at this point in time, there's no racing. Why I want you then to build this stuff and construct this stuff in pencil before you do it. And then I want one to also be on the bottom, directly below the one on the top and I'm going this this direction here okay now again let's go back through here okay and again straight edge kind of maybe but you know this will give me am I using a straight edge for lightly construction yes but then when we darken it in I want you to be freehand okay I want it to be actually freehand on this one here it's important that I get it exactly where I want it to be Okay, exactly where I want this thing to be. Now the kicker is, is okay, where, wh what is the result in geometry? Okay, what is the result in geometry here? What is cut off and what is not kept? Well, anything that is on this side of this plane is now removed. It is now removed, okay? So again, if you take and chunk this whole thing off, this part right in here is cutting all the way across. So the result in geometry will say, okay, I want this to come over to here. Where it touches that, it'll drop down. Where it intersects right here, it'll drop down. Okay. Then it'll cut back through here. Okay. And then where it basically goes through here, it's going to then chop. Let me go ahead and drop a line all the way down through here. So then, to get this construction well, I know that this line and this line is parallel, okay? So then, if I take the point right through here, again, I'm going to change my orientation here. I take this point right through here and run it parallel to where it intersects right here. I'm trying to run this line parallel. Okay. Then you have this being cut off here. Oh boy. Okay. This being cut off here goes out of your sight. Okay. And then this part here drops straight down. This goes back. And again, this may be difficult for you guys to, to try to stay up with me on this. But again, I'm off here a bit. So watch as I fumble around here, and you will see what I end up with. So just watch me a minute and don't try to keep up with me because you can review it again. And so then I'm taking this down to here, okay? So now what I'm going to do here is to make my life a little bit easier is I'm going to darken in parts of this thing, okay? So I don't get confused because I'm easily confused at times. So I'm coming over here, to there, to here, okay? This is cutting off at an angle right here, right here, right over here, okay? And then this is coming through here, and this is coming back to here, back over to here. Am I still on the screen? Yes over to here and I will drop this down to here and I'll kind of get this part in because I know where that's located at. Bring this over, bring this down, bring this over here. Okay and then let's take this and bring it down, take this and bring it down, take this and bring it over. Okay so we've got part of the top done. Okay. 
Now we've got to do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, so again, if you do this um, on the bottom, you know that this would come back to here because I'm just going straight up to here. And then if I run a plane parallel, so again, I have my, if I run a line here parallel, then I can say, well, now where does this thing cut here? Okay. In okay, case so if I run then this back, I'll run it back a little bit further. I need to run it back further. Bringing this back to here, bringing that down. Okay, so now you can see the construction here. So again, I will show this. Coming over to here, bringing this back up, bringing this down. Okay bringing this across, bringing this across, and then bringing this back. Okay? Now, what you see here is a lot of construction. Okay? A lot of construction for this object. Okay? A lot of construction on that object. Now, so we have an isometric view of it. Now, the question is, we want to make an orthogonal view of this thing. We want to show this thing in in this case, we'd have to use a minimum of three views. Okay, we'd have to show a minimum of three views. So the question is, is what is the most descriptive view? Okay, what is the most descriptive view of this object? Well, is, this, is it coming in and standing and looking in this direction? Is it being up above the object and looking down on top of it? Is it looking from the right or left side view? In my opinion, it would be looking from the front of the object, or looking for towards this object here, because that gives you then this general H shape, okay, the H shape here, or maybe you see it as an eye, but it gives you this amount of detail. With that said, now let's flip this sheet over and let's construct the actual orthogonal view of this thing. Okay, let's construct the orthogonal view of it. So again, it was 12 by 8 by 8. So I'm going to zoom up here a little bit again. Starting the bottom left hand corner in here tight. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So now I'm constructing in my front view through a frontal plane of projection. And I'm off Kelter here. And all I'm doing now is telling you the total height from top to bottom, bottom to top, left to right, right to left. Then I'm going to come up here and say, now I want then this view here. I'll leave two squares. It's going to go eight from front to back. Two, four, six, eight. Over to here. Over to there. And again, so this is looking down the top of the object. Front of the object, back of the object left hand of the object, right hand of the object. Notice these views have to align. There's no ifs, buts, or ands. It's one of the standards. So two, four, six, eight. Okay. Here. And here. Okay. So now we have, so I contend that any of you can, can basically Set this up and get the front, the top, and the side views. Maybe without detail, but you can get it on there because you know the total distance from left to right, top to bottom, front to back, left to right, top to bottom, front to back. You know those distances. So now let's go over here and let's start carving up this geometry, just like I built it, okay? Let's go over here and let's say, okay, now let's go ahead and let's take out these two prisms. Let's cut them. They're going to then come from positive geometry and negative geometry to negative geometry. It's just airspace. So again, if I count over here, it's one, two, three, four. It goes then one, two, three, four more and has four left. So it's right in the middle at four each. So on the front view, came over four, one, two, three, four. Came over here four and up four. Bottom of this front view, the same thing happens. Across here, the same thing happens. Now, if you've read the book on orthogonal views here, 
you know that an object line or a line that's seen will take precedence over a dashed line or a line that's not seen. So these lines here would be solid. Now from the side view, looking at it from this side, this prism was in there, but you can't see it. So this time you have to use dashed lines. Notice how I'm starting and stopping these dashed lines right at the end of the object right here. I'm, there's no gaps. So again, I'm coming over here, there, there, there. Here, and that one's got a little gap in there. There, 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 and there. You want to be long enough so you can visualize them. So if you photocopy and you can see them, okay? So now we have, now we have a prism, positive prism, a negative prism, and a negative prism shown in this view and this other view here. Do not forget to show where these things are not seen at. Again, coming over to here, then we have to use this inclined plane, okay? The inclined plane coming from here over to right here, okay? That inclined plane, then it starts on the very front of the object, two from the left towards the right, from the top all the way to the bottom on the very front of the object. Then it stays all the way from top to bottom on the very right hand end of the object and is four in from the back. So kind of visualize that plane here and which view we have to put it in first? The top view would be the most logical because again, we're gonna say two over. So let's go to this top view here and we're saying it's on the very front, it's two over and it's four from the back. So again, I'm gonna draw a straight line in here. And there's the result in geometry, okay? Now, let's go here again. Let's go here and say, okay, with that, that inclined plane is an edge here, thus it has to appear as a plane here. And in this view, it has to appear also as a plane, okay? Well, in this view, this remember, this is back. This is back, so it comes one, two, three, four from the back. One, two, three, four from the back. And it goes all the way to the front. Now, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and darken in every view except for the right side view because it's not complete. And I'm gonna dwell right on the inclined plane itself. Okay, I'm gonna dwell on the inclined plane. In this view here, it appears as an edge. You cannot see anything else besides the edge. In the front view, it appears as this H shape. Okay? So just working right now on nothing but the inclined plane. We know the inclined plane over here at the front goes from all the way from the top to the bottom. Over here it goes all the way from the top towards the bottom, but this time it's four from the back towards the front. Now the question is, is where and how does this inclined plane appear in this view? Well, wherever this plane, you can't tell anything about the description of the plane other than that it's an edge view in this view, okay? But what's the general inclination of this plane? This inclination of the plane is going from left towards right and from front towards back. So it's going from front towards back, okay? And then um, front towards back, and then you can't tell left, left towards right in this view. You can only describe that in this, in this particular view up here. So now, wherever this plane appears as a planar, uh, plane, it's a planar, okay? Then that shape and that many sides is gonna have to play in every other view except for it's an edge. So again, this eight shape here, somewhere over here has to appear as an edge. So here's a quick, and here's a way to try to remember how to do this. I'm gonna call this line segment right here to right there, I'm going to call it A, B. A is directly above B, so up here this is point A, comma, B. I'm going to call this segment from here to here C, D. Again, right in here it's going to be C, comma, D. Well, now you have one directly below it, so I'm going to call this one E, line segment E, and an F. 
Well, E line statement EF is below, directly below CD, so it's EF. So again, CD, EF, okay? Moving this direction here, well, again, this is going to be point G up here and H. This is I and J. So again, this point here is G, H, I, J. And then finally you have points K and M out here. Okay, so K is directly above M. So what I've done is I've labeled this, this plane, I've called it plane A, C, D, H, G, K, M, J, I, E, F, B, A. Okay, how many sides does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sides. So no matter wherever that plane appears, it has to have twelve sides. So let's go through here and let's locate points. Well, Point A is on the very top of the object, it's on the very front of the object. In this view, it's on the very top, and it's on the very front. Point B is on the very front of the object, it's the very bottom of the object. So then, here then appears line segment AB. Okay? Well, let's hop clear to the right-hand side, and let's do line segment KA, KM, excuse me, in this view. Well, K is on the very top, M is on the very bottom. They are one, two, three, four from the back towards the front. One, two, three, four. Here is K on the top and M on the bottom. Okay? So now let's work our way around this object. Let's just go ahead and work our way around the object. Well, you know that points C and G are also on the very top of the object. So they've got to fall somewhere along inside here because they have to be within this plane boundaries of KA. D and H have to be two below them. And on the bottom there, you have to have F and J down here somewhere, and E and I in the middle. But let's start at one at a time. Let's find point C. Point C is on the very top. Now, this time, I want to measure from the front of the object towards the back. And I'm going to say that's one block. So then this now becomes point C. Well, C then drops down to D, okay? And C is direct, or D is directly below C, so then there's that right in here. Now realize now at this time, this line here and that line there are cut off. We'll show you here in a minute. So this becomes then point D. <coughs> D goes over to H. <coughs> Excuse me. Then C or G is behind C. <coughs> so I project this thing up here. Well, where is then point G? I'm going to go to the very top. And it's one, two, three, four, five, and let's say <clears throat> a quarter of a block, half a block from the back. One, two, three, four, five. About right in here. Okay, that's G. What's directly below G is H. H connects back to D. There's that plane right there. Let's go to the bottom. Do the same thing over again. Well, where's F? E and F are here. E and F are right below this one, so you can just come over here and say, oh, there it is right there. This is E. This is F. And then I, J are directly below G, H. Right in here to there. So I is on top. J is on the bottom. Okay? So now, does it generally look like an H shape? Yes. Does it have 12 sides? And segment AC is 1, CD is 2, DA or DH is 3, HG is 4, GK is 5, KM is 6, MJ is 7, JI is H, IE is 9, EF is 10, um, FB is 11, and back A to B to A is 12. It satisfies that. It has the same shape. So then I'm going to go ahead and darken in this line here that actually define this plane by points. Okay? By points. But now let's go ahead and continue darkening the object. Okay? 
I'm going to look at the very top plane of the object. So I'm going to define the, in the very top and the very bottom. So there they are. We got them here. So then right over here, this is the top plane. The bottom plane is directly below it, covered up. So that top plane is up here. That top plane goes from the very front of the object to the very back of the object. From the very front of the object to the very back of the object. Also on the bottom, same thing. It goes from front towards back. Let's go ahead and darken that in. Let's go ahead and darken this in. Let's go ahead and darken this in. Let's go ahead and darken this in. Okay? Now, what do we have left here? Well, we have this negative space here, and it goes from starting at C, okay, and it goes from C all the way to the back. It also goes from D. Well, you can see this line in here, but then once it gets past H, it gets hidden away. So dash, 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 dash. Leave a gap, skip, tighten at this. So again, leave a gap off this, skip that line, then this one should intersect right at that 90 degree. And then this ends up being the orthographic representation of this object. Okay? And again, anybody can do it if you just take your time, figure out what's front, back, left and right, up and down, so on. So, you know, if your parents are saying, hey, what are you learning in from, from this engineering technical graphics course? Well, one, you're going to be very patient because we're behind and we're going to get this stuff done because of issues but that's kind of like real life. And you're also learning up from down, left from right, and front from back. You know, maybe your parents don't believe you, but you're telling them, look, look, man, look, mom and dad, I really know up from down now. And they're saying, I don't know about that. Well, Professor Miller said, oh, I knew up from down. Well, then maybe they will or not, maybe not believe me, okay? So then this is an example of basically a projection system, trying to use numbering techniques to help you out, okay? And um, we have two different kinds of, well, actually four different kinds of planes here. We have horizontal planes, we have frontal planes, we have profile planes, and we also have an inclined plane. Again, your general inclination is from left towards right, front towards back. That inclined plane had 12 sides to it. It kind of looked like an eye, and it's got 12 sides to it here, and it looks like a, an eye, excuse me, an H and it also has 12 sides over here, okay? So again, looking at that, and that should give you some ideas on how to do these inclined surfaces and inclined planes on these things here. So um, with that said, I'm gonna cut this particular lecture off. Um, there'll be more to come here later, and I hope everybody's either having a good night, a good day, or a good day. And you guys be good. Be safe, be patient as I walk over and I stop the recording.